Hello and welcome. Well, this is going to be kind of a miscellaneous video. I'm going to follow up on some past videos, one in specific, and then we're going to discuss future projects and maybe you can offer some input. Let's get started. Okay, first thing I want to do is follow up on this spring cutoff tool I made a few weeks ago. It works really good, but I've discovered a few things that make it work even better, more reliably. This is the original Armstrong spring cutoff, or actually, no, this one's Williams. I think they both made them. But what happens is it flexes right here, and the blade pulls back out of the work. So instead of grabbing, it, grabbing the work and go, tipping into the work, it pulls back out of the work. And it works great. But this is my quick change tool post design. This one's an AXA. I got plans and I'll post a link down below for the BXA and AXA for making this. Fairly simple project, works outstanding. But here's what I found. This stick out right here needs to be about three quarter inches or greater. If you, and I know that's counterintuitive. Usually if you want it as close to the tool post you can go. But it affects the strength of this spring and how reactive the tool is. And it works best three quarter inch or more if you got larger stock to cut. Tool height needs to be on center or very slightly above. RPM needs to be whatever the correct speed is for high speed steel. Like three quarter inch ends up being about 500 feet per minute or 500 RPM. And if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. It makes several kinds. This one I really don't like. This one's ideal. I don't know where I got it from, but if you can find that, that's ideal. This angle right here is about five degrees. I'm set pretty much on center. And my feed rate is two thousandths per revolution which is a fairly fast feed rate, but it seems to work really good. It's one inch stock, surface speed is a little bit fast. Let's give it a go. Of course, I haven't tested this in all different situations. I've just used mild steel, cold rolled. And I've cut up two inch and a quarter, but I'm really pleased with it. But I just wanted to cover the stick out on that and the, the angle and the feed rates and the RPM. Anyway, uh, I'll put a link at the bottom to the plans for this cutoff tool. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's way better than a standard cutoff tool, in my opinion. Well, what do you think this thing looks like? Big funnel, right? Well, the first thing I thought of when I saw this, and this is uh, something that was thrown out by my previous employer. I'm retired now. But the first thing that came to mind was a cyclone dust collector. Well, I've got a big cyclone. You can probably see it in the, in the background there. But I want to build a cyclone for metal. In other words, like a pre-separator. And I'm not sure exactly how to do it. I've got a dust port right here for my large cyclone. And I'm wanting to put this Cyclone pre-separator behind here. 
on top of a bucket or something and then make the intake go into that. But all the recommendations for this woodworking dust collector say do not do that because sparks will go in there and ignite the, the wood. And I definitely don't want a fire. So opinions. I need some opinions on this. The cyclone is basically it'll have like a barrel on top of this about that long and, and a, a intake that swirls the dust and the uh, suction from the main dust collector will be right here. A tube hanging down in the middle. But I know the separator will work but is it safe? Anyway, need some input on that. Okay, I got a box of goodies here. Let's see what's in it. Got some timing pulleys for uh, notched belts. Got a couple of tapered roller bearings. An ER-40 collet chuck on a spindle, which those bearings fit on there. And a stepper motor. Can anybody guess what I'm going to build here? Hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to build a gear hobber for my mill. Let me show you how it works on the mill, kind of. Okay, what I got to do is build an encoder that reads the speed of my spindle. And then down here on the, where I would normally put a uh, end mill, I'll put a gear hob. Now right now I've got a, I think it's a 916 tap in there. But that's going to rep represent my gear hob because I haven't got a gear hob yet. And this bolt right here represents that ER40 collet and a gear blank. Basically what's going to happen is this will turn at the appropriate speed so everything's timed where that gear hob will cut my gear teeth. So that's a project that's a little bit over my head, but there's some big advantage to, to doing it this way. You end up with a really perfect gear with only one cutter one gear hob. Normal gear cutters, a set of six or nine, I can't really remember, but depending on how many teeth you have around your gear, you got to use different cutters. And it's always a compromise. If you do it with a, a gear hob, it's always appropriate for the gear diameter. Anyway, that's a future project. I don't know when that'll be. It's a little bit over my head and I'm getting help on it, but Hopefully it'll materialize. Okay, right here's something I really needed. That was sarcasm. It's another drill press. But I couldn't pass it up. This is a Jass Clark Jr. and Company Willy Electric Driven Tools. Made in Louisville, Kentucky got a really interesting drive system. It's a puck drive, something like you would, uh, they call it a friction drive. I don't know how many of you are familiar with a snapper lawnmower. They got a very similar drive system. It's basically a, a motor mounts right here. It's got a rubber wheel on it and it turns the drive disc. And depending on where you put that drive wheel, if, if you got your drive wheel up close to the spindle, it runs a lot faster, and this is slower. But I don't have the original motor. I did get a motor with it, but it's a newer style motor. I was looking for an old motor, but an older motor that this for this time period, this is about 1918, is hard to find. So at least temporarily, I'm probably going to mount this three-quarter horsepower up here and make it work. And I'm thinking I might even make it belt-driven, belt to the puck, to the drive wheel. That way I can slow it down to the speed that I want. Anyway, that's a future project. 
Maybe the next one, I don't know. Yeah, I really needed this drill press. Two's not enough. But it'll be fun, I couldn't pass it up. It's such a unique drive system. Uh, leave some comments for this dust collector. If, if somebody's got some experience on dust collecting metal safely, let me know. And uh, I'd really like to have some input on that. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.